Yes, he's coming down. He's beginning to bow. He's over. Wow, what a sight. Ten years ago, Fantastic. in Baghdad's Firdos Square, also known as Paradise Square, an American tank uh, brought a chain up to a statue of Saddam Hussein and brought it down. And that was a seminal moment. It marked the end of the principal fighting in the Iraq war. And from that moment onwards, uh, Iraq, Baghdad was liberated and Iraq was, at least notionally, free. A day after that event, I found myself in Saddam's main palace in Baghdad, where a group of American Marines was going through uh, papers and, and files in the office. A Marine was in Saddam's office going through his things along with a translator who was probably Kurdish. And uh, he looked at one of Saddam's flags, which was right next to his table. In fact, it was this flag. And as you'll see, there's Arabic lettering in the middle of it. And it says in Arabic, Allahu Akbar, or God is great. And the Marine obviously didn't read Arabic, and he asked his translator what it said. And the Kurdish translator said, it says Saddam Hussein, which was not true. And the Marine then takes his flag and runs out to the, to the porch of the palace where there are hundreds of Iraqis have gathered and are actually cheering the Americans at this point. And he holds a flag up and he takes out a Zippo lighter and he's about to light it up. And the crowd was just horrified at the sight of this and they, they couldn't understand why he was doing this. Fortunately, I was standing right next to him and I was able to grab his hand and say, why are you doing this? And he said, well, my translator said it says Saddam Hussein and so I'm going to put it on fire and they'll like it. And I had to explain to him that that was not what the flag said and in fact, if he set it on fire, he would probably set off a riot right there in the palace. So he gave the flag to me and says, can you explain it to these people? And he runs inside. Uh, and now this, this crowd, this very angry crowd is approaching me. And my translator, fortunately, was able to shout above the din and explain to everybody what had happened. Um, and I took the flag and I gave it to an, an, an old man who was in the front of the crowd. He looked like a tribal sheikh. And I said, look, this is a mistake. This was a, this was a well-intentioned mistake. You should have the flag. And he said to me, no, you, you saved our flag, and so you get to keep it. And so um, this is a, a, a very important uh, memento for me. But that incident was also, for me, a sign of things to come. Over the next several months, because of an absence of understanding from both sides, American as well as Iraqi, tremendous mistakes were made in Baghdad, in Iraq, and those mistakes like the, like the firing of the entire Iraqi army, like the uh, criminalization of the Ba'ath Party, like leaving the borders unattended, these mistakes would have enormous consequence over the next five or six years of Iraq's history. It would let in Al-Qaeda, it would strengthen the insurgency, and it would cost Americans and Iraqis a huge amount of money, as well as an enormous amount of blood. Um, ten years later, Iraq is still, today, struggling with some of the consequences of misunderstandings, like the one that nearly led to this flag being burnt.